Hey, I'm Josh Ackman with Park Industries Customer Service Department. On this video, we're going to um, show you how to troubleshoot a grease malfunction alarm. So what that, gr what that alarm means is the machine does not see grease getting pushed through the system. Um, so we have a block, um, block or something like that happening here. So to start out, we'll go, we're going to go over the common ways here. To start out, we're going to go to our setup screen and then advanced setup. And in the center of the screen here, this is on a Voyager. It may be different for a Titan or something like that here, but on this Voyager, the loop X axis travel distance. It's standard Voyager one is set at 3,281. We are going to set this to zero and this will um, make the greaser pump grease. Um, otherwise, usually it only pumps grease every 3,281 feet that the x-axis travels. Put this on zero, and then we're going to walk back, and now you can see we have a grease flow malfunction alarm here. So we're going to go back to the greaser and see what's going on. So over here, the first thing that I notice is that the relief is, um, grease is coming out of that relief. Second thing I'm noticing is I'm hitting almost 2,000 PSI. So this relief will let the grease pump out at about 1,700 um, PSI. So if you're below the 1,700 and you have grease coming out of your relief, then your relief is bad. If we're up at the 2000, that means we have an issue further down our line. So what we're gonna start out doing here, we're gonna reposition the camera to the back of the bridge where our master block is and um, our Y-axis block so we can show you what you need to take a look at. Okay, we're at our master block here and we're just gonna take a brief moment here to explain to you how this uh, master block is working. This is the master, all the other auxiliary blocks, your X, Y, or Z axis is, will work the same here. But we're gonna concentrate on the master because we have our, our uh, pressure indicators on our master here. So in our case, this pressure indicator was popped out, leading us to believe right away that the um, Z axis here, this goes to, is blocked. How this works is our grease comes in and there's a shift pin inside this working section. This grease, this shift pin allows the grease to flow out of our exit line and then flow to the next block. Once it gets to the next working section, it'll allow that to distribute out and grease that access. And then it will allow the uh, piston to shift again and allow grease to go to the next section. If we have one of these pistons that are stuck, it will not allow grease to any of the other axes. So in this case, if we get grease coming out of our exit line, if we disconnect it, but our pin was popped, it can be our working section that is down line here our block for whichever axis is down line can be clogged, or it could be simply the working section on this block, it's not allowing it to go through. So in this case here, if this, if we're, we get grease out of this line, then it could be, and this pin was popped, it can be this section that's not shifting. If, uh, and then if this, sec if this pin was popped, then it could be this section. It's the one previous to it there. So that's just a brief rundown. We're gonna keep going here and try and figure out our issue and what we have on this one, but we want to give you a rundown to make sure you have a somewhat understanding of what's happening there. Okay, now that we're set up by our master block here, and this is our Y-axis block on this machine, um, first thing you want to look for is these three pegs. These, if any of these are popped out, you can see that I can catch my fingernail on it. Otherwise they're pretty flush. 
Um, if any of them are popped out, that's going to be where you want to start looking at here. Um, we're going to go through everything here to make sure, but uh, we don't miss anything. So to start out with here, we're going to... Now we did um, push our e-stop alarm in so our greaser is not greasing anymore. And uh, we're going to let this just crack it loose, let the pressure relieve off of there. To be certain, we can check, uh, we relieved pressure before here, but you can check your gauge by the pump, make sure your pressure's all the way down before you take your line off. We're just gonna remove our line you will be using an 11 16 and a 9 16 wrench to do this. And now that we have our line off, what I'd want to do is just go back and turn my system on again. Our distance is still set up at zero, so it will automatically lube right away and just make sure we're getting grease out of our line. If we're getting good grease out of our line, it will uh, then we'll connect everything back up. If not, we're going to want to take a look at our line, and there is one filter right before in that block by the pump. Um, but usually this is not a problem. It's just always good to be certain that you are getting grease. We're going to connect this back up nice and snug. We'll clean up our grease, and then we are going to next start by um, disconnecting the three lines on here. So we're going to pause the video, I'll get these three lines disconnected, and then we can, uh, we'll show you what you're doing there. Okay, now I have all three lines from my master block disconnected. Everything's cleaned up and everything here. Um, and our greaser, I turned our system back on, so our greaser is pumping grease. So you can see here that um, a little bit of grease, it's not a lot but a little bit is coming out every once in a while here. Catch all that grease here. And what you also want to watch for is that this proximity switch is turning on. Um, this is the switch that gives you your grease malfunction alarm. So right there it's on, now it just shut off. That switch, what it's doing is reading the piston inside there and making sure that that piston is moving. And if you have a clog, that piston will not move, so it will not trigger that prox, which gives you your alarm. It can be a clog anywhere. In this case, we have good grease flowing here out of every port, all three ports here. So this is not our issue. If we remember from the beginning of the video here, this pin is the one that was popped out. So that is the block that I'm going to wanna take a look at and uh, see from there what's going on. If I did not have any grease coming out of this grease manifold block here, the master, what I could do is I could disconnect the main line again and uh, take a grease gun that has the exact same grease that's in my greaser and that is very clean. I cannot stress enough how that it has to be very clean. A, one little speck of dirt can clog these up. But you, what you can do is screw a grease jerk to your inlet port at the bottom of your master and pump some grease through and see if you can get that valve to shift again. If you cannot get the it to move, then you have to replace um, that valve or that working section there. If um, replacing the valve is easier, but you can replace the working section. If you do replace just a working section, make sure you purge your lines again. So we're going to shut this greaser off and now what we're going to do is work further down line. Everything's coming out good. Um, we're going to shut it off and I'm going to connect one grease line at a time here. I'm pretty confident since this popper has popped, it's going to be on that line that I have my issue, but we're going to go through all three here. We're going to connect one grease line up and then see if we still get flow through all the other two that will be open. And if we do, then we can add a line. So we're gonna pause the video here and we'll be right back once we have that done. Okay, so now we cleaned up everything again here. We connected our Y axis. You can see our prox is on right now. 
and we do have a little bit of grease coming out, procs shut off. So that is telling me that it's, it is shifting and greasing yet. So our Y-axis block over here is good. And we can see we have grease coming out of our X and our X and our Z here. So now we're just gonna do a trial and error process. We're gonna connect one more. Um, since this one had the pin popped out, I'm gonna connect my top X block and uh, then we're gonna start it again and see what we get. Okay, now we connected our X axis line, cleaned up any grease we had around here again, and we turned our system back on at our zero feet again so that we are greasing again. You can see already that uh, we have grease coming out of our Z axis block here, um, our master that goes to the Z axis block. So our master is greasing well here. So that means we have a, um, we have a blockage down line now. So we're gonna just uh, show you how to do down line here. We'll pause this so this stops greasing and connect our line and then we'll show you how to troubleshoot down line. Okay, so now we came to our Z axis block because that's the one down here that we were working on and we disconnected our feed line to it. And I have the system back on again, so the greaser is pumping, and we can see that we are getting grease coming out. We'll let this flow for just a little bit to make sure that it, we are getting good grease out. But then, if we're getting good grease here, now that's telling us we have a clog further down line. So now we're down to, it can be in our mass, in our manifold, can be in our lines, inspect your lines for any damage or anything. Um, it also can be whatever you are greasing, whether it's a bearing or a gear or anything like that. So the, what uh, you can do here is um, we can hook up a grease zerk to this manifold here and push some grease through it. I would recommend taking these lines off and then you can see when good clean grease is coming out. If you cannot get that grease to come out of here, then you'll need to replace your manifold. Once you do have grease coming out, then we'll work further down line and disconnect our lines from here, make sure our, our lines are not damaged or clogged. And then we need to look at that access. So it may be, Earlier in the video, I explained how the everything has to grease and work together. We could have one pinched line over here and that will cause the system to not grease at all for the whole system. So we'll have to individually inspect whatever is further down line then. Um, if you are getting a grease malfunction alarm um, and it's just every once in a while, if you reset it, and it doesn't come back again, you don't really necessarily need to worry about that. That is just that the prox misfired, it did not read it in the specified time, and if it looks like it's working, your prox is coming on and off here, then uh, you are still good to run there. It is greasing yet if it is coming on and off. As always, give our customer service department a call if you have any questions, and we'd be glad to help you. Thank you.